Welcome to the first edition of Unite Planet's Road Trips. A brand new series in which members of the Unite Planet team explore different places in the UK and beyond, bringing our own take on our experiences. In this, our first programme, we went to Amesbury situated near Salisbury in Wiltshire. We visited one of the most famous ancient landmarks in the world, Stonehenge. Situated about two miles west of the town of Amesbury in Wiltshire near Salisbury stands perhaps the world's most famous ancient stone circle, Stonehenge. But being that it's around 170 miles away from United Planets base in Derby meant an early rise for the team. Well, um, it's quarter past two in the morning. Um, it's an early start for Stonehenge because we've got to be at Stonehenge at 7am uh, so we're travelling from Derbyshire at uh, the United Planet House down to Wiltshire, um, Salisbury so yeah <laughs> an early start, uh, just waiting for Paul he's gone to the 24 hour Tesco for some chocolate uh, and then for Donna to arrive and then we can uh, be on our way down to, towards Birmingham to pick up Bernie and then hopefully um, the traffic should be okay this time morning should head straight down <sighs> ah Milo you need some food don't you I can't let you starve all day can I what kind of owner would I be then there you go early breakfast for you too Nothing like a big piece of Stilton for an early breakfast. Mm. 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 Right. I'm going to get a bit of bread with this. So what is the official verdict on the history of Stonehenge? Well, they say little is known. All the information given in the mainstream about Stonehenge has come from sporadic archaeological finds. The big questions of who built Stonehenge and why it was built are not known, so guesswork has pretty much become the standard model of the education surrounding the history of Stonehenge. They say it's so old that there is no written record about its construction or its original purpose. They say Stonehenge is probably around 4,000 to 5,000 years old, being constructed over a period of several hundred years. They also assume that one of its uses could be as a burial site and for religious ceremonies. It was apparently built in stages, with the unique stone circle being erected in the late Neolithic period, about 2,500 BC. The larger stones, called sarsens, weighing an average of about 25 tonnes, were said to have been probably transported to the Stonehenge site from 20 miles away, while the smaller stones, called blue stones, weighing around 4 tonnes, were believed to have come from Wales. Archaeologists are baffled how all the stones from the site could have been transported from so far away without the use of modern technology. Some guesswork into the answer include being rolled on tree trunks or 
by boat and then being dragged on pulleys using around a hundred people to drag it all of which seems a little unlikely especially when you consider the incredible precision of these stones in the way that they line up to the midsummer sunrise and the winter solstice sunset marking the longest and shortest days of the year as well as other even more incredible precision placements that we will get to later on Stonehenge today is a protected World Heritage Site though work and restoration has been done at Stonehenge most notably in 1958 it remains one of the great ancient sites of the world Stonehenge attracts around 1 million visitors a year and today a few of that annual million are on their way to get a more esoteric and deeper understanding of what Stonehenge is all about Our visit to Stonehenge was a tour of the site, organised by Michael Feely. As many of our viewers are aware, Michael Feely is a good friend to Unite Planet and has featured in our films a couple of times and no doubt many more in the future. Michael gave a more insightful and deeper understanding into Stonehenge which will underpin this whole film. Joining Michael was Donna Roberts, an energy healer and Reiki practitioner who will be conducting meditations in and around the site during the day. We finally arrived at the Stonehenge Visitor Centre at about 7am. We took a little time to look around the centre, checking out the magic pulley thing and some of the information there. And also these reconstructed Neolithic huts, which according to the Stonehenge Visitor Centre, house some of the workers who were involved in the construction of Stonehenge. After a short coach ride to the site itself, we then proceeded to walk up towards the stones. Once we were in amongst these magnificent monuments, Michael Feely imparted his incredible esoteric knowledge about the true nature of Stonehenge. Information that we will never hear from within the accepted version of its history. Stonehenge is in effect a giant phonetic profiler, capable of deciphering messages within sound waves and sound within a language messages from other worlds that allow a wise and the in-tune masters of sound to add to their wisdom. It was a large tuning fork to balance and purify their own vessel to a pitch of a higher place. There are coded messages within sound waves which are being decoded by an ancient Enigma machine. This is in the same vein as the modern SETI search for extraterrestrial intelligence that we use today, sending out messages within radio waves in the hope that they will reach a far and distant race. Well, they have already been here, and most probably still are. Through the use of various sonic techniques by using crystalline monoliths as harmonic tuning forks and ancient computers, as we use silicon in computers today, they were able to transcend to other worlds and ascend to their own vessels of God-state highness. Due to the esoteric nature of Michael Feely's tour here, the people from the group who did turn up to be here today were there because they were chosen to be. So why is Stonehenge situated where it is? The location attracted those on the correct frequency who in turn placed stones in the correct location to receive the coded communications in code telepathy. This code could also be found in encoded pictographs, such as the Nazca lines, the encoded communications. This is a result of focus transcendent through wave separation. Many messages are in spiral form, 
as a spiral serves to translate the messages by slowing down the wave and focusing through the wave transference energy that also moves in spirals. This utilizes or transduces electromagnetic waves, which is the conduit for breaking down a signal from universal languages into phonetic profile. Phonetic profiling is transcribing sounds that occur in a language, letters that represent sounds. It is like a gigantic World War II Enigma code breaking machine. This was the purpose of multiple user necessity. Therefore, multiple people must hear and feel and understand the same thing. Stonehenge was used to resonate with the tonal rill, which taught wise ones with wisdoms entering the physicality through the crown chakra transceiving system. That's a transmitter receiver system of circuitry. This also happens to Michael Feely, and he can feel the information and ancient knowledge being entered into his mind. Tonal rill is a download through overtone singing. Overtone is a single human voice simultaneously producing two or more clearly audible tones. Tones equal stones or ringtones or ring stones. A bit like when you have a ringtone on your phone. It all derives from that. So this can then be caused to harmonize with self. The human voice is also able to interact with the stones by using a special voice technique creating a distinctive ringing sound by isolating one particular harmonics. It is a precise resonant frequency of the stone, therefore vibrating it. Sound and light are entwined to one another and both carry information and the root word of sun is son, as in sonic. All ancient sites have information stored in the stones as the human body has information stored in its bones. When sound moves through you, it unlocks a doorway and allows an information flood into your body. It also penetrates into the ground, affecting Earth's vibrations, changing molecular alignment. Crystalline structures can transmit a large amount of information to evolved or plugged in humans. Sound is a tool for transformation for keepers of sound. Stonehenge is circular because it can open a commoner portal at the circle center creating circular waves. Circular resonance can create portals. Overtones also activate the inner portal, the pineal gland. The stones were a chakra balancer and an amplification of the transmitter and receiver energies connecting earth and sky. The Presley Blue Stones of Stonehenge have seven bands of energy that connect the seven chakras and they have a diameter of 33 feet. 33 and 7 equals important spiritual numbers. 33 is a number of Christ consciousness. Jesus died age 33 and the frequency 33 Hertz is the frequency of sacred geometry. There are 33 turns of a DNA to complete the cycle, 33 degrees of masonry and we have 33 vertebrae. The word Amen is also related to the number 33. Number seven is also a sacred number. As mentioned before, there are seven main chakras within us, seven days in a week, seven sisters on the Pleiades. The moon passes through stages of seven days. There are many more examples of number seven being a sacred number. The altar stone is off center and it was built upon the yin aquifer that records sacred information of the sacred site. The Merlin stone, as it is also called, also has significance as Merlin is symbolic of the inner wizardry of self. In alchemy is the philosopher's stone. The moon has an impact on water, therefore it was important to monitor its location by a lunar calendar. The trilithon represents unity consciousness, completed from two individual cells. They are 13 feet high and 7 feet wide, 13 being many into one and 7 being end of cycle. They were originally 30 of them, and 30 being connection to a higher force. The avenue and heel stone is the end of individual consciousness and the entry into unity consciousness. Each sacred site represents a planet or planetary orbit called planisphere. Silbury Hill represents Earth and Mars. The famous face on Mars has grid latitude of 4523.893421 which when divided by 2160, the zodiac significance, it equals 97.3386882, which gives us both the diameter and location of Stonehenge, 
in a clear planetary correlation. Mathematics gives its location. A 360 degree circle divided by a megalith yard of 2.72 equals the radius and location of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. So whoever built Stonehenge were telling us how to find the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Stonehenge itself represents Saturn, which is the god of wisdom. The hexagon on the north pole of Saturn is the hexagon of wisdom and knowledge. Even crop circles that are largely located around the region of Stonehenge contain hidden encrypted messages within sound called diatonic ratios. The monuments of the world contain hidden coded messages and act as radio wave transmitters and receivers to other places. It is in essence a cosmic satnav. And wherever in the world they are located or whatever shape they are formed, the story is the same. They are the first computers on Earth. They are gigantic motherboards and residence chambers. The artificial mound in Wiltshire, called Silbury Hill, is the largest ancient man-made mound in Europe and is an exact replica of the mound found in Sidonia on Mars. Even more incredible is the area in Avebury in Wiltshire, where Silbury Hill is located, is an exact map overlay of an area in the Sidonian city of Mars. While taking photos, on some we notice possible orbs and a UFO. Though it does seem many of these orbs could in fact be lens flares from the light source, but due to the location and the energy connections felt today, we feel it's worth sharing. Another aspect of our visit to Stonehenge was the energetic connections and meditation which was conducted by Donna Roberts, who challenged the energetic sound frequencies which resonated with each of us in the group. While in meditative state and vibrating at a higher frequency, Donna was able to communicate and receive information of the experience. Here is the notes Donna made of the information she received relating to our time at Stonehenge. Mothership rendezvous at Stonehenge you are keys, connections to galactic grids, high energy signature to activate anchor the portal at Stonehenge, as its pyramidal frequencies match that of the Great Pyramid in Giza and the Earth pyramidal keys are being activated at this time, as are those within the physical human structure. Now Donna says she's not familiar with the language of pyramidal, but over the years has worked with and had info on the energetic planetary grids and also the etheric grids so to speak. Anyway, she continues that she has had what many would describe as unusual experiences, yet very real to her. And, and the day that we went to Stonehenge was the culmination of a longer build-up for her to prepare to anchor the higher frequency energies into the grids. She says that many times she's worked with group energy and know that everyone present, whether they are conscious or not, is working with their multidimensional self and as a message conveys, we were keys. She noted that when discussing this with Michael afterwards and the resonance created within the stone circle was like lots of tuning forks. Although to her, whilst in the zone, she was not aware of anyone and she was just vibrating and had to reach out and touch someone that someone was Paul in this instance, as to feel something physical was to ground her. After the experience, Michael himself said he actually felt himself vibrating and was as though the stones too were singing. Although she says she was not aware of that 
as she was conscious of energies being raised and also going into the earth. The vibrations and the connecting energies I think resonated with everyone in the group, including myself. Donna concludes it was very special and a far greater service was undertaken than she could put into words, which is where the emotion come from. And as she returned, she could then feel the intense energies vibrating within her. She also stated that she would not have been able to do what she was guided to do without the presence of all in the group and the group energy and of the roundhouse meditation. She was guided to each individual and was all given something but she states that this was not from her personally, it was from a higher level of consciousness. In addition to Donna's meditations and channeling energetic connections, a member of our group, Shani, demonstrated the meditational and holistic healing purposes through sound with her Tibetan singing bowl. Here, Paul gives it a try. Um, Stonehenge. Um, I've had my air cut, you see. A little bit different from yesterday. Um, that was this morning. Um, I, I just want to end the video on a, a little personal kind of note on the day. It's very much a, a spiritual journey. For me personally, at Stonehenge, Donna noted, which I totally agree, that everyone who was present at Stonehenge in our group was meant to be there. And personally, um, I feel the reason I was there uh, was through the meditation because um, meditation is something that I've been trying to get into I've been I've been learning about it for a couple of years um, I've always attempted meditation but not been able to to truly go there successfully uh, or find a way um, and Stonehenge the Stonehenge trip gave me those answers I came away knowing the path I'm going to go when it comes to meditation, uh, my own path. And that was shown to me through the meditation of Donna at Stonehenge. So that was one aspect that I felt I got from Stonehenge, one aspect. Um, I felt the great calm, the con you know, the, you feel the, the energy connection, you feel the vibrations and, and you feel, I certainly felt a great calmness as well. Um, which helped me no end and it also helped me in a way like I said before knowing where to go with meditation so you know that's a really big thank you to you know Donna especially Donna for that uh, but also everyone in the group you know they all played the part certainly so um, that was probably the most defining thing that I got out of, of the trip to Stonehenge and why um, I know was the reason one of the reasons that I needed to be there and I, and I was there so that's my own personal take on that now I know there'll be some viewers who are not consciously connected to the esoteric side and you know they don't feel that urge to go down that route or you know to, to get that connection and if the and if the spiritual esoteric side and the energy healing and all that side of it is not for you and 
and it's not part of your journey. Now, I believe that we're on a journey and this physical embodiment of reality and human that, that we are is just part of the journey and we're learning lessons. If that kind of spiritual esoteric nature is, is not for you when you're not feeling it or resonating it, then that's fine, you know. Um, but for for us at United Planet, it is. And, it's a, and it connects into, for us, it connects into everything that we do. We do. Uh, and this is why, you know, Michael feel his information uh, and the research that he does resonates so strongly with, I mean, not only myself, but I know the other United Planeters. So we strongly feel that, you know, there's a reason why we connect with Michael and Donna. You know, this is a new connection. Um, and this is all part of the tapestry, you know. So, a, you know, a big thank you to Michael for the tour and, of course, Donna and everyone who's in the group, you know, we were all there for a reason, like I said, and we all played a part and it was just great connection and took so much out. And, and I'm sure I speak, not just from the United Planet group, but to everyone in our group at Stonehenge that we all took something from it, definitely. Um, so a big thank you to everyone involved. Um, and I, you know, and I feel it's a great first United Planet road trip. So it just leaves me to say, uh, you know, thank you for watching and um, look forward to seeing you soon on the next United Planet Road Trip. Goodbye.